What's going on everyone? This has become a bit of a yearly tradition for me, I guess. This is my third year now reviewing Pentatonic's Christmas specials. And, you know, this isn't something I expected to be doing three years from now because, you know, the first one was a bit of a surprise. It was kind of out of nowhere. It's like, oh, we're going to have a Christmas special. And then it was a kind of a big deal at the time that they're going to have these guests that they had on there. I believe in the first one they had uh, Dolly Parton. I, th I think they had Kelly Clarkson in that one, too. But you can look back, the past two years I had reviews posted around the same time as this one um, in their respective years, so they're still available for you to watch. Uh, so you might have some idea, if you've seen those, of what kind of uh, opinions I have on these things. I just want to preface this by saying that I come from a certain perspective. I come from a bit of like a filmmaker's perspective, this is how I view a lot of things nowadays, only because I'm very passionate about film and television and you know telling a story and everything so you know I understand that the average person will overlook some of the little the minutia that I go into where it's like plot holes and whatnot I know that's first of all not entirely important to most people watching this special um and for the people creating the special they probably don't care too much about that either because you know, it's a Christmas special. It's supposed to be, you know, I know it's corny in its very nature. So, but I want to kind of run through it real quick um, and kind of give my thoughts on it overall. It's just the critic in me, the reviewer in me cannot just ignore the the weirdness, the cringiness of it all that's mixed in there. The past two years have not um, had a shortage of cringiness and corny moments but uh i gotta say I, I think this is probably my least favorite of the specials uh i don't know it's just it, it kind of comes down to this and it's that the other two were a lot more casual and you know not uh let's see this one they really wanted to embrace a full narrative it's kind of like the focus of the film. So they're leaving it open for me to criticize them on that now. Uh, so <laughs> if they want to make it revolving around the story, I mean, the story's got to be good. And I don't think it was great. Okay, in the beginning, it was Pentatonix dressed up. I was like, what is this, a Halloween special? Everyone was dressed up in the weird stuff, which, of course, they talk about later. Scott's gladiator outfit, Kirsten, like a, a mime French outfit. Uh, <laughs> and then I was like, okay, what's going on? Um, and then they're saying they started off with what Christmas means to me, which okay, that's an interesting way to start it. Just how they started their tour. Uh, but it does. Uh, it, I gotta say, it bothers me these scenes that are dubbed over. Uh, I hate. The, I've always hated them in regular television, like with the uh, their appearance on Bones. How, like painfully obvious it always is that it's dubbed over in a studio because it's like crystal clear uh, like smooth audio and like whoa it just it's always felt uncomfortable to me and I'm like also for something like this it's like I, I'm not really getting much from it if it's not a new rendition of the song it's like why am I watching this um, but they were just kind of singing that I'm pretty sure that's how it opened and then it goes into the whole mystery aspect. They forgot the events of the previous night. And it's a Vegas Christmas mystery. Whoa. So this is where it all starts. The super cheesiness. The bad puns. Are there are a lot of... Uh, I think Kevin is guilty of a lot of those in this. They just kind of throw them in there. Every time they get a chance of throwing a good pun. I didn't write down any of the specifics. But uh, you know if you've seen it. Uh, they're just dancing around, singing, rocking around the Christmas tree next. Uh, they literally go around a tree, a tree at some point. Um, Kirsten, I gotta say, in this part, she th this is where you see that she was uh, a bit handicapped in this particular spot, and she's been for the for the tour as well. So it's been a while now. She's had that problem with her was it her ankle specifically. Um, and yeah, so she had to rock that in the Christmas special as well. Uh, and I, I wrote down Kirsten as a crippled queen because 
she still managed to really rock that that look she had going on and i have to say i mentioned this a couple of times in this i wrote down like a kind of a recap as i was watching it and i mentioned a couple of times that kirsten just looks so good in this christmas special uh I think it has something to do. I've always preferred the more simpler look in like she's kind of gone back to that old traditional just black hair like she used to have. Um, and I, I kind of really like the simplistic look. So I think she rocks that really well. And yeah, it was just very apparent in this Christmas special as well. And then they're like, there's this whole thing where Matt's kind of remembering, oh, didn't we do this? And he's like, remember when we did this? Zip lining through a Ferris wheel was one of the things. And then they were singing Joy to the World. Um, I can't remember if they were actually singing that one or if it was um, just playing in the background. Also, a lot of these throughout, I'm like, it was kind of confusing on whether they were actually doing it live or if they were doing them in the recordings or what. I, I don't know. Definitely some of them were dubbed over. Uh, I feel like what Christmas to me means to me was taken right from the album, though some later ones I'm like, maybe they recorded a newer recording of it, but still lip synced it. I'm not sure. So I'm not going to criticize that much because I don't not 100 percent on that. And then it was weird. They were like talking about how they just Pentatonix had just uploaded a new music video while they were recapping this. That was something that came up. Uh, recapping the night and they play a where are you christmas music video which never actually happened like the i haven't seen the where are you christmas music video yet but i know just from the thumbnail that that's not where it was filmed it wasn't filmed in front of front of what was it like a chapel or something like joy to the world style but it was like outside it was just kind of an excuse to do where are you christmas i guess um but it was weird because it's like an alternate reality music video and some weird fake snow was going on. It looked like it was digitally added. Um, and then they always did these weird things where they were like, maybe the Backstreet. They did these teasers at the end of each going into commercials and coming back. It's like, Pentatonix don't know what to... Or we'll continue looking through their memory, trying to find their memories. Maybe the Backstreet Boys can help. And then, no, they can't help at all. They just, they, they go to a movie theater and they're just singing in a theater uh, well I don't know if it was a movie theater it was just a theater and uh, they were just singing in the seats it's like alright I didn't find it to be particularly impressive that that collaboration uh, they did the don't worry be happy winter wonderland thing and I was like okay that's fine and then it went into how did you get that gladiator outfit Scott and he was like and then he talked about how he traded it for he trades his jacket for the gladiator outfit um so it was really weird it was like a, a stupid joke like hey man he saw this guy in a gladiator outfit I'll, I'll trade my j jacket for that <laughs> and he's like okay and then they trade and then Matt narrated a bit, which I liked. That was a really nice little transition. Matt did some narration. And they run into Kelly Clarkson at a restaurant, Eiffel Restaurant. And they sing Grown Up Christmas List. I gotta say, when watching these some of these segments, I felt like, from a cinematography standpoint, I felt like it wasn't filmed particularly in an impressive way, a lot of these shots they did. Uh, like some of the shots in the Grown Up Christmas List performance i was like mm, this is this is weird i don't i didn't like the filming style they went with um, but i know that's not something that people really care about and then kirsten gets a costume from a mime of course uh she rocked that co costume though so i don't mind it and then oh, also with the grown-up christmas list they had a random table there was like only one couple was present while they were singing this at a restaurant and the couple just randomly decided to propose. They just knew perfectly that Pentatonix would be there. Kelly Clarkson. And they were like, oh, it's going to be the perfect time to propose. It's like, I, uh, that stuff to me is like, ugh. I don't need that. It feels so forced and awkward, but happy, happy, joy, joy. 
And then they had an absence show, which was like circus. Cir- I don't really know absence, but it's like circus style performance. I'm guessing, you know, Cirque du Soleil, Cirque du Soleil style stuff. And this is where they did Making Christmas as they were performing behind them. Uh, and this was good. But it was also very awkward. Like, if you look at the audience, like, they don't account for that when they're making these specials. That people will be looking at other anywhere but them. But I look at the audience, and I see, that, like, the front row is, like, two inches from their face, it feels like. And I just see them sitting perfectly still. I can only imagine they're just staring them right in the face. So, weird. And then you can see the time passing, and I'm like, wow, they're spending over an hour recapping their night. Like, this is what they're doing with their night now. With their day now, is just recapping the previous night. Cool. Uh, and then Penn and Teller randomly have Pentatonics singing Sweater Weather and Coldest Winter, which Kirsten was on one foot the whole time. I, I was really sure that after this, they were just going to be like, all right, that's it. And I was going to be like, why did Penn and Teller have Pentatonics on their magic show just to sing two songs randomly? But uh, of course, it comes back into play. Uh, Penn and Teller, of course, they put a spell on Pentatonics because that's what magicians do. They just <laughs> they perform magic on people. They're putting a spell on Pentatonics to make them forget everything that night. I don't know why, just to be dicks. I don't. What? What, is, what are they gaining from that? It's like, ooh, that's funny. We made them forget everything they did this night. Um, but Matt, this was so weird out of nowhere. I did not expect this. Where Matt was like, oh, but I remember there was this one. Uh, I don't remember how I described her exactly, but this one hot girl in the audience, basically. And he was just falling for her, and he was like, oh my god, staring in the audience. And she had, like, her camera or her phone with a flash on. And the flash somehow prevented him from losing his memory from this magic pen and teller spell. Wow, that's magnificent. And <laughs> it just makes it was just so weird, and it felt so out of place for Matt. And I'm like, does Matt usually fall for random women in the audience that he sees? Is this a thing? Uh, like, I'm wondering whose decision it was to make to <laughs> make Matt be that guy. But, uh, of course, Carlos the Concierge knows Penn, and they call him. And, of course, Penn sleeps with a video camera right above him like this. So <laughs> they call him, and the... the For some reason, this this camera automatically answers for him. He's sleeping, and it wakes him up. (laughs) There's so many things wrong with this. But who cares, I guess? But he's laying there. They intrude on him with this call somehow. It's forced upon him while he's sleeping. Looking down, I still don't understand what they were going for there. And then, of course, logically... um, uh, (laughs) Penn Gillette decides, okay, I'll, he just does some random rhyme, and as, as of course all magicians do, and reverses the curse on them. And then, of course, they go and they sing When You Believe with Marin Morris herself. In Las Vegas rec- Rescue Mission, and it definitely seemed like they were trying to recreate the Hallelujah Christmas special shot from before. Where they went around everybody. Um, also, like the Can't Help Falling in Love music video. Which I always like, but it really didn't work nearly as well for this this one, I felt. But uh, this one was hard to tell whether it was live or dubbed. I felt like it, was, it sounded exactly the same as the album, so I have a feeling it was just the recording. But, um, don't know for sure. And then at the same place, Las Vegas Rescue Mission, they sing Hallelujah, which Matt actually does Avi solo, which indicates to me that this was, at the very least, uh, a new recording of the song. I I couldn't tell if it was live or not, though, because, you know, there's some weird audio things to keep track of there. And then the end. So this is what it comes down to for me. There was no real closure for it. 
I tweeted a couple times for this, didn't tweet the whole thing because I was trying to take notes. Um, but one of the things I did tweet was that this ending was not uh, satisfying at all. It's like, I don't get it. I just don't get the story. Like, Penn and Teller just did a dick move and decided to erase their memory. And then they recap everything that happened that night. They call Penn Gillette, get their memory back. And then they go to the Las Vegas Rescue Mission, sing some songs, and that's it. That's the end. Not exactly a thrilling mystery. They presented it as a mystery, like the classic mystery style narrative. And it wasn't really a satisfying conclusion to that because the mystery, there wasn't much, much mystery there. It was just Matt had all his memories, so there was, it was, shouldn't have been a mystery to begin with. He just recalled it to them, and um, there's just some weird stuff in there. And I felt the other two Christmas specials were better in terms of worthwhile performances, and at least the cheesiness, I don't know, it just seemed to work better for me in the other ones than it did here. It was a little bit much for me. Because, you know, I was watching it there with my mom, my mom was falling asleep, of course. She usually does anyway. But, I mean, I could tell she wasn't really getting any enjoyment from it. So that that's very indicative to me of how the Christmas special is. Because, I mean, of course you can say, I'm just over being overly critical of it. And I'm not uh, maybe the target audience for them. But, I mean, as a, a hardcore Pentatonix fan, I didn't really enjoy it. And as a very casual uh, Pentatonix, like she's heard a, a lot of their music videos just from me doing the Pentatonix tournament and whatnot, my mom, but uh, not really a fan. She didn't enjoy it either. It's like, <laughs> I was expecting it to be more, I don't know. It's just the prospect of recapping a night isn't exactly the most exciting story to begin with. And then not having a lot, a lot of the dubbed things and corny stuff it doesn't really work for me but uh, i'd be very interested to hear your thoughts on it i know some people just love everything the pentatonix do but i can't do that i can't as a person who reviews things i can't in good conscience just say i love it because pentatonix did it um i because it, it just felt unnecessary to me after watching that it's like i didn't really take away much from it there weren't like, there were cheesy parts, but weren't too many memorable moments. Uh, so, that's what I think. I much more would have preferred what, uh, presumably, Us The Duo's Christmas special was, that they just released on Amazon Prime, I believe, and that is presumably just a live concert recorded for a Chris as a Christmas special. I much would prefer that, because... You know, you can't go wrong with live performances, but the mixing of the cheesy storytelling with the uh, dubbed over segments doesn't, I mean, it doesn't work for me. So I'd love to see a fully live rendition Christmas special from Pentatonix next time. But regardless, if they do another one, uh, you can expect me next year to do another review. Uh, please comment below. And uh, I'm not a hater, so to get that out of your head already.